Okay. Yeah. Start whenever you're ready. Okay. Oh, after three. Okay. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, everybody. This is Steve Cowell, and I'm doing my first online tutorial for painting and drawing intermediate. And um, welcome uh, my class who've been um, looking at this, uh, the, the, the subjects we're looking at, and welcome to anybody else who's actually watching. What I want to do is a um, demonstration of watercolour, and it's a very, very simple demonstration, basic watercolour techniques. And these techniques are wet on wet, wet on dry, dry on wet, dry on dry. I'll say that again, wet on wet, wet on dry, dry on wet, dry on dry. And these are very simple techniques that you can use. And, um, if, you know, basically, if you just take the words wet and dry and do every single combination you can of those two words, you'll get close to what I'm talking about. Now, um, what we've looked at before, we've looked at, some of you have looked at JMW Turner and his watercolours, um, worth looking at, please. Uh, Turner, fantastic watercolourist, of course. We've looked at Paul Clay, who's a little bit more uh, abstract, um, maybe not so challenging to people. Maybe uh, the thing about modern art is often people think to themselves, well, I could have a go at that, I can try that. And uh, Paul Clay is a marvellous artist to look at when you're starting off with watercolours. I could mention other names. Um, Russell Flint is a name that comes to mind. His are uh, a particular subject matter, which um, may not appeal to everybody, but if you want to look up Russell Flint. Another person I could mention is Edward Burrow. And Edward Burra, Burra is B U R R A, B U R R A. B -U -R 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 -A. He's a very, very interesting, very original watercolour artist. And he painted in a huge scale and he painted with very dense colours. Sometimes they don't look like watercolours at all. In fact, I don't know where on earth he got his paper from because his paintings are huge. But anyway, um, he's a very interesting watercolourist. I could mention Elizabeth Blackadder as a watercolourist. Beautiful um, flower paintings. Uh, very good. Or another person I'd like to mention as far as these techniques are concerned of wet on wet, wet on dry, dry on wet, dry on dry. And that is an American early 20th century painter called John Marin. And Marin is M-A-R-I-N. And he lived in, I believe it's New England uh, on the um, east coast of America. Uh, very, very interesting, but very difficult to find anything about him. But you will be able to find images on Google of his work. But he's a great person to look at for these different techniques. He's a, he's a modern painter, um, but he, he really does explore these techniques and they're great. So um, if you, um, what I'm going to do is just really um, do a very simple demonstration. I've got some water here and I've got some brushes. I use all sorts of brushes. I actually quite like nylon brushes. You can get sable brushes. Um, I'm just gonna, yeah, yeah, or, or brushes like this, um, which are very expensive. You don't have to pay that much. Um, uh, nylon brushes are great. And what I'm just going to do first of all is I'm going to wet the paper here. Just wet the top of the paper here. Okay, all wet, splashy, lots of splashy. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go into these are Winsor and Newton uh, paints, really quite good quality ones. But I'm going to go in with a into um, my cerulean blue and just let it run. And this is wonderful. I love doing this with a with um, watercolour. I just love watching it run. It's something very nice and that's a very, very early wash. Now, what I can do is I can get really wet. I can kind of make, can you see this? I do mean, see this palette here. Um, and uh, I can make it really wet, very watered down. I can put this in and that's great. Okay, so that's wet on wet, wet paint on wet. Uh, what I'm now going to do is with another palette, I'm going to uh, get a, um, a greeny colour like this. This is a very deep sort of uh, viridian sort of um, green, okay? And I'm going to make this wet, okay? So it's very runny. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it onto the dry area. Now you can see that does something completely different, okay? So it's actually wet. You can see the streaks, you can see the brush marks, but can you see how that doesn't wash away? It just really covers it very well. Look at that hard line at the top there, the way that does that. That's a little bit of wet from the sky coming in, but that's okay, accidents are allowed. So that's wet on wet, wet on dry. And now what I wanted to look at is 
dry on wet. Now, what on earth do I mean by that? Well, dry means you have hardly any water at all. In fact, a tiny little amount of water. And I'm just going to go into this ultramarine blue here. And I'm going to kind of just basically get my paintbrush covered in just paint. So there's hardly any water at all. It's just the pigment. And then what I can do is I can go in here and I can start to kind of outline things. Now, I can outline the clouds here. And the thing about this is that it's actually, yes, it is a, it's a dry brush, but it actually does bleed and it actually goes into things and uh, it actually, sm um, you know, it actually runs. But you've got a little bit more control than you have with wet and wet. So there's just a couple of clouds and you can see here where there's a lot of water that's moving away. That's great. Let those accidents just happen. So we've got wet on wet, wet on dry. Dry on wet, and now what do I mean by dry on dry? Well, I'm just uh, here drying off my, um, I've got a bit of tissue paper here. I'm just drying off my um, brush as much as possible. And I'm just going to now go into some, uh, a, a dry um, pan like this. We call these pans, okay? Hardly any water at all. And I can just start doing like little marks like that, little strokes. Uh, and can you see how this is dry on dry? Can you see how this is, um, just like it has a feeling of sort of dry, um, you know, if you're looking across a wheat field, um, I'm going to wash that out, but dry it off. And I'm going to get some, some yellow. Here we go. A nice yellow. And this is dry as well. Oh, here we go. And can you see it actually kind of like breaks up as you put it down and you can build up something like that. So it looks like a wheat field, it looks like stubbly wheat, something like that. And we could actually just um, build that up, maybe even put in some other colours. I'm going to put in a cerulean blue, just a bit to complement it. Okay. Not cerulean blue, that's cobalt blue, sorry. <laughs> cobalt blue, there we go. And that's a little bit, but you will find that when you're working with watercolour, different colours work, they, they move in, a, in different ways, and you'll get to know that as you go along. So this blue is actually just a little bit more dense, it's not as dry as the other colors, but it, it's still dry. Okay, so just a little bit of sort of differentiation here. Wash my brush, dry it right off. And let's put some, let go in with a more sort of orangey color. So you're getting a kind of a basic, what I've got here is a kind of a basic, looks like a beginning of, of a basic landscape. I'm just showing you how um, these, these four techniques work. And what I want you to do is I want you to find photographic reference. It can be a photograph, it can be another painting. Uh, but I want you to do your interpretation of that landscape. It must, I'd like you to do a landscape, please, of a landscape in watercolour using these four techniques. Now, I'm just going on this straight onto the paper. This is um, heavy cartridge paper just for demonstration it's fine um, this 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 heavy cartridge paper which you can get in hobby craft is is, is great um, and you can stretch it you can water it and you can use gum strip and, and stretch it onto a wooden board a wooden drawing board um, that's good you let it leave it to dry and then it doesn't buckle up like this um, or you know you can do it in a sketchbook or you can do it do it um, you know, I'm not really that, that that concerned about whether you buy expensive watercolor or but I'm what I I am concerned is about these four different techniques that you use them and you explore them in putting together this landscape. Now, if you're a little bit nervous about going straight in with a paint, you can sketch it out. Um, I would use a very, very hard pencil, usually 2H. This is actually a 4H and you know you can kind of do it very, very lightly. So you so when you actually put the, the paint on, the um, uh, you know, you, you will hardly even see the um, the, uh, the the pencil marks. That they'll kind of be you know, only just there. Um, two H would be would be perfect. If you use something like that. A two H pencil would be fine. So do it with a for hard pencil. And there we go. And don't be scared. Don't be worried about leaving white spaces. I'm leaving white edges. They're, they're quite nice. That's fine. But let's see how you get on with that. So that's your homework. Um, and um, I, I wish you all the best. And what we can do is we'll find a way in which we can actually 
post these uh, paintings that you've done. You can take photographs, preferably with a decent camera. Um, you can take them.